Hello everyone, it's Raza Van Werder talking about a book that I published nine years ago and it is based on the, the visions I had of God face to face, <clears throat> the beatific vision seeing God face to face by Raza Van Werder, 2009, and I am reading from the book and explaining things about the beatific vision to take a break from my personal private childhood and all that. Now you graduate to the next prayer. Each prayer helps you to go steps higher, like a staircase. You are coming closer to God, and the closer you are, the more cleansing there has to be. You examine your mind and heart, and you discover the thoughts and feelings you have that are not righteous. I do not mean super evil things. You are a saintly soul. You better be by now, or you're not going to get to the next step. You are not filled with evil. That left you long ago. I am speaking of normal desires and thoughts that are not perfect. You are going to have to renounce them. Each person has a different set of thoughts, so I will spread out my own and you can go from there. <laughs> this is what I renounce. Lord, I renounce all my ambition. I no longer want any fame and fortune. I only want you. I also know that I cannot stay in a state of bliss all the time, even if I have you, because I have to repair for the sins of others. But in most regular times, I will enjoy your company, and that is my reward. I renounce my idea of getting a new and better house. If you want me to have this, I will have it. But I will no longer think about it, desire it, plan for it, or talk about it. I will make no more plans in that direction. So that's one part of this book, The Beatific Vision, Seeing God Face to Face, by me, Guru Razaban Werder. And I'll just make, make some remarks now on the subject. Um, when I was doing what I explained that I did, which resulted in seeing God face to face, when I was doing these activities, prayers, disciplines, I had no anticipation or concept that I was going to see God face to face. I did not say and think, oh, I'm going to do this and then I'll see God face to face. Do not do that because you, you'll scare away the experience. Because it has to be unconditional love. Do you understand what I'm saying? You must love God. True love is unconditional love. That's why families don't, don't always love you. A lot of family love is conditional love. You see yourself, your friends, in movies of, of parents who demand you do this, you do that, you do that, do you have, and, it's, and a lot of it is status in the world, status. You got to graduate college, you got to go to graduate school, and then you have to be a lawyer or a doctor or a big shot. You have to make a lot of money, you have to get a house in the right neighborhood. You have to marry the right girl and have children and blah, blah, blah. You, they, they, they push you, they force you, they push you, they force you. And different people have different requirements and different demands. Uh, and these demands show that their love is not unconditional. They'll love you if you obey them, if you do what they say, if you follow the program, if you maintain their status in society and in the world, this is not God's love, not God's love. God's love, uh, when you love a child, you, you help the child to develop what makes them happy, what is you, you believe what is good for them, but not forcing. You don't do like what uh, Joan Crawford did to her children Chris and Christina, she forced her will on them, uh, and, and then B.D. Hyman, the daughter of 
Betty Davis, she had a spirit of control. It was an evil spirit, a demonic spirit. The spirit of control is not God, is not of God. It is not unconditional. <clears throat> it's not true love. And when B.D. Hyman didn't obey her mother in all things and everything, including leaving her husband, that was what Betty Davis tried to make her do, split her up from her husband, who, who she loved for like over 50 years or something now. Yeah, because she was 16 and now she's 71, I believe. So, B.D. Hyman. So, she's been married all those years with this um, great husband of hers. So... The, the love of these women was controlling love. I control you. And when she disobeyed Betty Davis, in the end, and she wrote a book, which was not even telling the truth, the whole truth, but mildly explaining the conflicts and the problems, the mother, without even reading the book, this is Betty Davis, told B.D. Hyman, I will destroy you. You understand me? I will destroy you, which shows that her love was never love in the first place. It was not. It was demonic. It was evil. You obey me, and it's, okay, so let's go to my mother. I identify with these women that were abused by these famous stars 100%. My mother had a controlling spirit. Oh, and, and another interesting thing B.J. Hyman said in her speech, uh, lectures. She said, Mom left behind her demons after she died. Mine left behind her demons as well. <laughs> they do that. They do that. Mine especially um, was able to abuse me, continue the continual abuse of me through other people whom she brainwashed, programmed, left her spirit of control, her spirit of hate, her spirit of destruction with them. They weren't quite like her. They didn't have as much influence over me as her because now I was an adult, I had moved on, I had done other things. But I noticed they hurt me and my relatives hurt me in many different ways. Some hurt me by ignoring me for years, untold years. I'm talking 30 to 40 years not speaking to me. Some ignored me most of the time, but not all the time. Never got invited to weddings. Then there was a spirit of control also. Still present, the same spirit mom had. I don't know about the hate, but you know, Hate is manifested in many different ways. Hate can be manifested by coldness and silence. It's not always hot hate. It's not always cursing you out and calling you names, you know. Sometimes it's just ignore the bitch. You know? She's no good. Don't even talk to her. Don't, even, don't ever invite her to our weddings. Don't invite her to our Christmas parties. Don't invite her to our house, which is in a nice place. Don't invite us, her to anything. You know, it's all, hate takes on many forms. Many forms. Okay, so um, seeing God face to face is what I'm talking about. I have done it. <laughs> it's under my belt. That does not mean I'm in a state of perfect consciousness. I might be in a state of holiness. I'm, I, I don't know everything. Even though I have seen God face to face, I have the interior divine stigmata. I have all the graces of the Holy Spirit. I, I have the gift of healing. I have the gift of transforming, helping people be born again, uh, gifts of deliverance of the Satan, answering people's prayers. I have, just like uh, B.D. Hyman has all these gifts. She's, she's, her, her forte, I think, is deliverance. As I look at her lectures, I think she's in the stratosphere. And I think that that had to be overwhelmingly powerful for her because her mother sent her all these demons to try to destroy her entire family and actually was afflicting her family horribly, her, her sons, her two sons. She explains it. 
uh, Betty Davis's demons actually drove her older son crazy and gave her younger son the spirit of rebellion and gave B.D. Hyman cancer. But she beat them all. She beat them all by the blood of the Lord. And she explains how she did it. It's marvelous. It's incredible. And I've, I'm listening to her tapes and I've gained wonderful things from her. Wonderful things. You never stop learning. Never. I don't care if you have the stigma, if you've seen God face to face, if you have all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There is no end to learning. Never. As long as you live. You keep learning new ways to pray, new ways to, to think, new ways to love God, uh, new ways of healing, new ways of deliverance, everything, all kinds of things. God is wonderful, and God is infinite. How could you ever stop learning about God when Almighty God is infinite and we live in an infinite universe? I believe that this very physical universe is infinite. I mean, the Hubble spacecraft has photographed a billion galaxies. Hear me, hear me, hear me. I didn't say a million. A billion galaxy, galaxies. You know what a galaxy is? Like the Milky Way galaxy. It has photographed a billion galaxies. I believe there's no end to the physical universe. And I believe God is in it. I believe God is in the atom. God is in the neuron, the neutrino. The God is in energy. God is not somewhere else far away. God creates us in every moment. God lives in us at every moment and in all life to be continued.